you everybody for coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little black subscribe button at the bottom of your screen, go ahead, click that black subscribe button really does help our audience grow. really does help our channel grow really does help and mean more than you could possibly know. So go ahead, hit that little black subscribe button. Also, Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Betfred Sportsbook and the Betfred Sportsbook app. Bet 50 on any game, get 250 in free bets. Thank you again to Betfred. Thank you again to you. Now, here is the video that you came here for. And I do want to talk about one of our favorite topics here in the spring in college hoops. And that is, of course, the transfer portal. And I'll tell you this. The transfer portal, it's like a, 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 a bad guy in an action movie, like a bad action movie. Just when you think the portal is dead, oh, no, 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 no. It's back. It's alive. It somehow comes back alive. That's how the portal's been all spring. And on Monday, when we feel like it's finally starting to slow down, we got another big commitment involving a school that we have talked about quite a bit on this show, St. John's, Rick Patino, or as I call him, Big Rick Energy. That's because coming into the week, and if you listen to Monday's Aaron Torres pod, we talked about this. St. John's actually picked up a really big piece in the portal on Friday, Jordan Dingle, six foot three guard, second leading scorer in college basketball last year at Penn. Um, and we're going to get more into him momentarily, but they were basically down to like coming into the week. They basically needed like just one more piece and their roster was set for the 2023, 2024 season, which is insane because when Rick Pitino first got the job, uh, oh, I don't know. They needed to fill 11 scholarships. Well, Rick Pitino, St. John's come into the week needing to fill one scholarship, and St. John's fans did not have to wait long because Zuby Edge, a former top 50 player who played the last two years at Kansas, entered the portal about a week, 10 days ago, whatever it was, was recruited by some of the biggest names in college basketball, took a visit to Villanova, was considering Kentucky, and Kentucky wanted him pending what happens with Oscar Shibway. San Diego State was in the mix. TCU was in the mix. A bunch of other schools was in the mix. But Zuby Ejiofor said, no, 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 no. I don't need to take any more visits. You know why? Because I'm coming down with something. I'm coming down with that big Rick energy, baby, as Rick Petito and St. John's got Zuby Ejiofor, a former five, a former four-star top 50 player in the high school class of 2023 to commit to St. John's Red Storm. And so with it, people, I need you to just say it with me now. Big Rick Energy, baby. Rick Petito does it again. Get your Big Rick Energy t-shirts. Link is in the show description. But enough about Big Rick Energy. Let's talk about this roster because what I will say is this. I said it after Jordan Dingle committed. I believe that St. John's now has a roster built to make the 2023 NCAA tournament. I actually believe they had it before uh, Edge of Four committed. And I believe Edge of Four is the cherry on top of the Sunday. Let's start with him. Let's talk about him because he is a really, really, really interesting player. Listen, if you look at the stat sheet on Zuby Edge of Four, nothing's going to jump out, okay? But he is a former top 50 recruit, played at Kansas last year. And I believe he's kind of a, a nice metaphor for the world of college basketball in 2023. If this was 10, 12, 15 years ago, I believe this kid commits to Kansas. Next year, he makes a major step up. And I believe by year three, year four at the latest, He's an all Big 12 kind of player. But Kansas, they have a chance to get Hunter Dickinson. This isn't 10 years ago. Kansas has a chance to get Hunter Dickinson. And so this kid kind of says, you know what? The school's going to do what's best for them. I got to do what's best for me. And I'm going to enter the portal. And so he looks around, as I said, plenty of interest from plenty of big time schools. And there is a reason why. He is going to be a really good college basketball player. Six foot nine, rim runner, super athletic, plays hard. Um, rebounds the crap out of the ball. You know, he's just he's just going to be a perfect role player next year for this St. John's team and a player that I believe can develop into, again, an all-league kind of player by the time he's a junior or a senior, especially when you have a Hall of Fame type coach, whether it was Bill Self or is currently Rick Pitino. There are some guys, you watch them, they're six foot nine and they're playing basketball because they're tall. No, this kid is six foot nine, but he's athletic. He's skilled. As I said, he is only going to get better. But also, as I said, this guy really, to me, is the cherry on top of the Sunday of what Rick Pitino has already done, because I do believe that this program is in great shape going into next year. It starts with the player I just mentioned, Jordan Dingle, six foot three guard, uh, played the last couple of years at Penn, 
was the Ivy League player of the year, the second leading scorer in college basketball. Now, he he committed last week. He technically is still testing the NBA draft waters, but look, I'm not here to tell anybody what they should or should not do, but I don't see any draft board that has him going high, and so I expect him to come back to college basketball next year. I don't believe he makes a commitment to St. John's unless he is serious about returning to college hoops. So you have that guy as a building block. 23 points per game, uh, great score, great shooter, about 37, 38% from three. And listen, he's not perfect. You know, he doesn't get a ton of other people involved, but he's a guy that I believe next year at St. John's, he averaged 23 at Penn. He can get 16 or 17 next year, no problem at St. John's. You also have, and I think this is important to note, because everybody looks at what Rick Pitino has done in the portal and says, oh, you know, come on. I mean, how many difference makers did they really get? Well, first of all, you don't need 12 difference makers in college basketball. You need two to three. But on top of that, it's also worth noting, St. John's returns a really good player in Joel Soriano. 15 points, 12 rebounds, one and a half blocks per game, six foot 11 center. And this is the kind of guy that just hasn't gotten enough credit because St. John's hasn't been very good. St. John's has not been good, and because of it, people don't realize how good this guy is. But me being, one, a guy who covers college basketball, but two, a UConn guy, obviously I'm playing very close attention to the Big East. This guy, again, has a chance to be really special and become, you know, household name feels a little bit aggressive, but one of the best big guys in college basketball next year does not. Again, 16 points per game, 12 rebounds, one and a half blocks this past season. I think he has a chance to be really, really, really good, especially under Patino. And then the other pieces that have come together the last couple of weeks, I really like as well. Glenn Taylor, six foot six guard forward wing from Oregon State, averaged 11 and a half points per game. RJ Luis, six foot seven wing, played at UMass this past year as a freshman, averaged 11 and a half points per game. And again, he's another one. All you got to do is look at the schools that have recruited him to know what kind of player that he is. RJ Luis, when he entered the portal, just keep in mind, just about everybody in college, I don't want to say everybody, but there were a fair number of really high level teams in college basketball that wanted this guy when he decided to hit the portal. He is a, in my opinion, I think he is another one like Zuby Ejiofor. That is a developmental player that's going to be really good next year and has a chance to be really, really good the year before. By the way, Louisville was in on RJ Luis, Texas A&M, the reigning SEC runner-up was in on him. So big-time programs are recruiting this kid, and he chooses St. John's. And then, of course, there are a couple of the role players that are coming in from Iona to help the cause. Also, Sean Conway, shooter from, uh, from VMI, helping the cause as well. But when I look at at this roster. And I think, and now that we're done kind of breaking it down, I don't need to go through every player, another, you know, a high school player out of California as well, Brady done that. What I look at is I see, first of all, I see a team that that's like a perfect, not, not perfect, but a really good Patino team. Okay. Because Patino, listen, this is something I talked to St. John's fans about when he got the job. This is not Mr. You, you get, you hire him as coach and he goes out and signs a bunch of five stars. I'm not saying that doesn't work for Cal Perry. I'm not saying that doesn't work for other people. But what I am saying is that's not who Rick Pitino is. He's never been the five-star guy. What he is very good at is identifying young talent that is really good and can be developed over a two, three, four-year period. And I don't believe that there's a better person at that in college basketball than Rick Pitino. We all know the names of all the greats that he's coached in college basketball, and most of them were not elite five-star guys coming out of high school. Donovan Mitchell was not a five-star coming out of high school. Uh, Francisco Garcia, who was a star at Louisville for Rick Pitino, was not a five-star coming out of high school. He played in the NBA. You go back to Kentucky, you look at all those, that great 96 team. Most of those guys weren't super five-star elite, can't-miss prospects. And oh, by the way, at Iona, it was funny. I said to St. John's fans earlier this offseason, St. John's fans were freaking out because Iona's best player, Walter Clayton, decided to commit to Florida over St. John's. And I said, who was Walter Clayton? Who was Walter Clayton? before Rick Pitino got his hands on him. So he's got a nice core of some veteran older players, including Soriano, who's going into his fifth year. Um, but he's also got some players like Luis, like Zubi Echefor, that he can work with. What I do know is, I believe he has enough on his roster to compete uh, in the top half, certainly, of the, uh, of the Big East. I'm not saying they're going to be better than Marquette or better than Creighton or better than UConn in game one. But I do believe they have a team that is going to be get better as the season goes on and I think they are very much an NCAA tournament caliber roster 
going into next year. So credit to Rick Pitino, credit to my guy, Big Rick Energy, because this guy has done it again. That's right, my boy, Big Rick Energy, Rick Pitino, baby. Get your t-shirt now. But I just, I love what he's done. And what I really love more than anything is that he has stuck with the plan. He didn't get nervous when there was a couple guys early in the portal cycle that it didn't work out with. He stuck to a plan and he has put together a roster that is good enough to compete in the Big East.